the hottest stocks of the last six months isn't a technology company. It's a retailer, although I really hate using that word when it comes to this company because there's so much more than that. I'm talking about RH, the high-end furniture chain forming this restoration hardware with a stock that's more than doubled since late May. I've always been a big fan of this, as is, unfortunately, for my bankroll, my wife. And last week, we found out that Warren Buffett is, too, as Berkshire Hathaway just disclosed a major 6.5% stake in the company. Hey, making him the fifth largest shareholder. In response, of course, the stock surged to new highs. Today, pulled back about 2.9%. Could this be your moment to buy? You know, I think. But let's check in with Gary Friedman. He's the brilliant chairman and CEO of RH. Learn more about how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Friedman, welcome back to Man Money. Thanks, Jim. Good Gary, to be here. It has to be a thrill. Isn't it a thrill when you read that Warren Buffett took a big position? Oh, my gosh. Uh, you know, when the when the Oracle somehow finds your company in, you know, all the companies in the world, I we, we think we've done a lot of good work over the years. And, um, you know, every now and then I'll get reached out by a lot of people. I've never got so many people call or text me about an event ever in the history of my career. Well, it's, it's deserving because he likes to find companies that have moats that are unassailable. And you've obviously built one. Well, we believe we're building one. You know, and, and uh, you know, look, Berkshire is one of those um, businesses that we I've talked about that we had greatly admire and we study. And you know, there's kind of three three companies that that we kind of model ourselves after: mm -hmm. uh, Apple and LVMH and Berkshire Hathaway. And Apple, from the perspective that it's a uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to build a kind of an integrated ecosystem of products, places, mm -hmm. services, and spaces that all kind of amplify and render our brand more valuable. And uh, like LVMH, we're building a luxury platform. Right. And as Bernard Arnault says, uh, luxury goods uh, are the only places possible to make luxury margins. And uh, we believe we're on a path to do that. And uh, like Berkshire Hathaway, um, uh, you know, we're building a business that's really capital efficient, generates significant cash flow. Uh, enjoys a low cost of capital and is generating industry-leading returns. So um, uh, somehow we showed up on the radar, and we're, we're just proud. Well, have you ever been to the Nebraska Furniture Mart? I mean, which is supposed to have unbelievable uh, dollars per square foot. Of course, I've been there. You have? Yeah, yeah of course, I've been there. Uh, we 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 look at everybody. I mean, whether whether you know whether somebody's a direct competitor or not, uh, anybody that has any level of success or something to learn from. So. Uh, we we walked the entire thing. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. this this conference call uh, did not include the fact that you're with Buff. I would have loved that hear that, but this is the first time we've seen it because yeah. I didn't know you had any association. I mean, obviously, if you studied his model, you've learned a great deal about what he's done, which has had really good prices. Uh, but you also are not for the masses. That's a little bit more of a mass outfit, right? Uh, oh, absolutely. I think it's the it's the highest volume furniture store in the world. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to learn from that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. In this conference call, you spent a lot of time talking about China, and not just the way people are saying. You, you've been saying last time. Last time we saw each other was in February at the unbelievable store. That's right. the gallery downtown. And and you you said on air that you bought stock. Of course, fifty percent made right then when you said it because you told me, listen, we're not the stock that people think it is or the company you think it is in terms of being hostage to China. That's not what you are. Yeah, no, look, I, I think, I mean, you, you know, if you just take a step back, uh, there's a major trade imbalance. Um, it's, it's important to correct that trade imbalance. We're funding China's growth. Uh, and, um, you know, so we, we don't look at it. I mean, it, look, there's, there's always episodic things like this mm -hmm. you have to deal with. Um, you know, we're, we're taking the appropriate steps, whether it's sourcing some of our product outside of China. Um, I, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to all work out. You know, China is still going to be a, a supplier to the U.S. Right. And, um, you know, and, and look, they, they, they make some of the greatest product in the world. As, as much as people want to joke around made in China, you know, almost every iPhone is made in China. Right. And it's one of the best products in the world. So, um, look, I think you, uh, you know, there, again, we, we try not to overreact to, to kind of what we believe are episodic kind of uh, you know, things that happen in the business that are outside of our control. We... You know, we, we react as, as we see necessary, but we take a long-term view. Long-term, well, we think China is still part of the mix. I think it's important. One, at one point, you do say that Trump is a master negotiator, use those terms, uh, and you talk about the art of the deal. At no point do you say, hey, listen, it's not that good for shareholders if we have high tariffs. It, it seems as if this is something that you just say, look, we're going to do well, regardless. You do not plead. Like so many other retailers, you do not plead poverty. You do not say, wow, we can't pull it off. you got to help us. That's not in your style. No. Look, everybody's got to compete in any market condition, and, and that's how, how we think about it. And, um, look, at, at the end of the day, um, 
uh, like I, I, I tell someone, look, the, no one talks about the, the incoming money that's coming into the United States from tariffs, right? We, we, we have, um, uh, you know, the highest stock market we've ever had. We have the lowest, you know, un uh, lowest unemployment we've had, and we have the longest economic expansion in the history of the United States of America. It's not that. Hate him or like him. Yeah. Right? Hate him or like him. Well, well, yeah. For, forget about it, it, whether you like Trump or not. I mean, I, I just look at the, kind of the results of what's happening in our economy, and I think there's a lot of good things happening in our economy, mm -hmm. and um, and I think long term. You know, some of the short-term pain is going to be worth the long-term okay. gain. Now, one of the most amazing things is to hear about a whole continent that is waiting for our age. You took a trip to Milan. You had a lot of things happening in your head about what can go next. Yeah, we, we have a, a completely new view of the world. I, and I think it's, it's funny. I, I joke around and I say, you know, sometimes we're, we're just dumb Americans, right? We've, we built a business in America. We see America. It's a big country. Tons of opportunities here. And... And uh, this doesn't um, uh, mean we're going to lose a focus on, on America because we can we probably get to five billion, maybe five, maybe six billion now as we Ooh, we look at what the target. opportunity is. Yeah, as we look at the opportunity in North America. But when you really motor up and you see the whole world and you start just looking at the math and uh, you know I talked about L LVMH being the largest luxury platform, whether it's LVMH, Hermes, uh, you know Gucci, the Richmond Group. Um, only 25 percent, roughly 25 percent of all those brands' business is in America because they didn't start in America. Right. So they have a global view. So I, I said to our team, like, look, we, we've got to motor up and have a global view. Don't be the dumb Americans that only see America. <laughs> and now, now we've done the math and we've looked at it, I think, pretty clearly. And we think, we think two-thirds to three-fourths of our business can be outside of America. And if, and if you do the math on that, you say, hey, if we can be... Five billion, six billion in America, we could be a, you know, twenty, twenty-five billion dollar company, and that's only with the existing part. Twenty-five of our billion dollars. That means there's a lot of runway. Oh, tons of runway. But that's only with the existing part of our ecosystem. I think when we start to articulate the the bigger vision for RH and the the you know the integration of of products, places, services, and spaces, which you're starting to see with our interior design right. business. Um, you'll hear us talk about in the future, possibly architecture, possibly mm -hmm. landscape architecture, and a services platform. Um, you know, we're going to have. I mean, it's. I haven't talked about it publicly yet, but it's gotten out there in the real estate trends. But people ask me, I hear you opening a hotel in New York, and I say no. Oh, I hear you opening a boutique hotel in New York, and I say no. And they say, well, what are you doing? I say a, a guest house. And so the guest house will all be right. the next part of the ecosystem, um, which um, all intended to kind of elevate. The RH brand and position us as thought leaders and tastemakers as a design platform. It's working. And congratulations on your new big shareholder. It's most deserving for a person who's changed the retail landscape. That's Gary Friedman, the chairman and CEO of RH. I think under 190, you're getting another chance.